It's launching right now today. As of right now, you can go ahead and place your order for Triple A G Fuel. Only the best fuel goes in my Mandalorian jetpack, <laughs> and that's Triple A. That's Angry Army Ammunition. Uh, get the collector's uh, box now while uh, you still can, which comes with our sweet ass uh, a, a Angry Army tumbler cup, shaker cup rather. And then you have our freaking flavor. Thank it's you delicious. so much over the years for supporting us by buying G Fuel. And now we have our own flavor, which means every sale of the Angry Joe tub, a percentage goes to us. It directly supports the show. So as long as we got this, we've got another way that the mobile infantry can support us and our videos. Uh, buy a tub, buy two tubs, tell your friends, 30% off code, can't get no better discount than 30% off, that's Angry Joe code, so use Angry Joe at checkout and get yourself 30% off, buy a bunch of them, thank you to the Angry Army so much, you guys are amazing. Well, most importantly, it's a flavor that we've loved forever, when yes. we first did the flavor test video a yes. long time ago, we gave this flavor a 5 out of 5. There are so many flavors yeah. out there, I've tried over 50 flavors, and I'm telling you, this is the best of the best, only for you guys, alright? Well, here we are at the conclusion of Season 3 of The Mandalorian. Now, uh, been, a, been a little bit of a controversy uh, back and forth on the direction of the season. We were hoping that the season would end strong in the last two episodes, and I will confirm for you that it does, in fact, end strong, at least in my opinion. Oh, no, oh, get these two with their faces. Okay, well, we'll have separate opinions. We'll debate it here. We but have I differences think, of what strong is. I, I think it ends strongly <laughs> uh, now. Does that mean that it forgives the rest of the season and, and makes it flawless and amongst the best? No, it doesn't, unfortunately. Uh, but I do think uh, that it delivers on what it was trying to do in that last bit. Uh, so, in my opinion, a, a strong episode. Um, individually, episode eight. Um, now, this one <clears throat> basically picks up right where the last one left off, just in mid-Mandalorian uh, retreat. Uh, the Mandalorians manage to rally and take the fight to the uh, Beskar troopers. I don't know if they have a more official name than that, if they're called com Super Commando still or whatnot. But I'm just going to call them Beskar troopers. I love the Beskar trooper design. You get to see a lot more of them here up close. Uh, Din Djarin gets his own badass scene. Bo-Katan gets a badass scene. We get Gideon's fucking epic power armored. It's it seems like it's extra strength. Yes. You know, robot, <laughs> Robocop. <laughs> right. And the he's kicking ass. Yes. So silly. <laughs> well, it's just to let people know that this yeah. motherfucker, it one on one, you're gonna you're gonna have problems. Mm -hmm. Um and then uh if, Axe Woes even gets a bit. God damn it. Makes Paz Vizsla's death look fucking stupider. It, it makes it, yeah, God, worse. I wish Paz... These guys should have switched spaces. Paz is alive. And this guy sacrificed himself. But, yeah, uh, Grogu finally gets his moment to shine. Uh, God, this poor Grogu has been treated like a... What do you call it? A pet. This whole fucking season, really, and finally gets to contribute a little bit. And that's what I really, really enjoyed, why I think this so episode is uh, solid. And uh, we get a little bit of, uh, I believe, the conclusion, or at least um, a seeming conclusion to the Gideon uh, power struggle here. Or at least a conclusion to uh, retaking Mandalore. We can say that. Mandalore has been retaken. Uh, the Mandalorians have been unified apes together strong. Mm -hmm. They rip wholesale off of Planet of the Apes. Mandalorians stronger together, yeah. says Bokeh. And she says it exactly like that. Well, we also got the we are Groot. I mean, <clears throat> we are Grogu moment, too, at the end. But, I mean, yeah. there's a lot of bar. Uh, but the action scenes, amazing. We get uh, space battle. We get atmosphere battle. We get explosion. Well, atmosphere battle. Uh, we get ground combat. We get a huge clash of armies. Anybody that's been complaining about the lack of jetpack use can now shut up because this has extreme jetpack use. But it's still inconsistent. No, I, shut the fuck up, Joe! It's like, okay, are you God 
Damn Are it. you going to run out of gas? Because earlier I, uh, yeah, you were yeah, like, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. we, we can't right. make it that far. I'm glad you brought that I'm going to go to <laughs> fucking <laughs> space and back. Yeah, like, and back. Wait a minute. I did write that down. <laughs> okay. I was like, no, he's right. Uh, <laughs> yes, exactly. But we get the payoff of a jetpack battle. Um, we've never really seen it before. And it's uh, perfect for a Mandalorian showdown because that was this is what Mandalorians do. Surprisingly, R5 gets a gets a little moment to shine here. Didn't expect that. Mm -hmm. uh, the robot that kind of explodes that Luke says this is a piece of junk. Well, it turns out Rar 5 is not a piece of junk. He was a fucking hero. I don't know why you have to do this in Star Wars, but yeah. Anyways, he's a, he's a fucking hero. And um, yeah, so I don't know. I fucking enjoyed it. Now, there are a few uh, surprises because um, and, and negative surprises in my my take that uh, I was looking for a spy. I was wondering how the fucking, you know, how the Imperials were able to ambush them, so I thought there was a spy amongst them. A lot of people were considering was it was it that that, that female wrestler that's on Bo Katan's side, or or was it the armorer because of the horns? Is she actually Rook? You know, uh, um, <clears throat> Death Watch still loyal to him somehow. None of that comes to pass. Uh, it's just frankly pretty standard. Pretty standard way to wrap it up, but I thought, uh, you know, satisfying in, in the way that they filmed it. But rather standard. No no huge surprises. Uh, Royal Guards get uh, their comeuppance with the combined effort. So I like all these combined efforts. Uh, you got a Grogu-Mando team up. You later have a Grogu-Mando-Bo-Katan team up. And, um, yeah. These are these are great. So that's what I thought of the episode. What did you think, Joe? <clears throat> I thought uh, some of the fight scenes were pretty cool. Uh, other than that, I felt like everything was rushed. <laughs> it was not the buildup was not there. It felt hollow. These the season finale was not satisfying for me. I really had a lot of problems with this. Like we finally get the the big baddie Moff Gideon. We see him for a little bit and dead again. I was like, okay, we overtook. The whole for the whole thing was like, oh, we're gonna uh, retake our Mandalore, and it just doesn't feel like it's earned. This stuff. You, know, you remember earned, when Moff I'm, I'm thinking about everything else, not just this episode, but like it kind of sucks. Like, it, no, yeah, we gotta think this episode right now, Joe. We'll get to the it's season rushed. finale. This episode was You're still right. rushed. I agree with you 100. It was just too much. It was kind of goofy how those. Um, uh, what do you call them? Those red Best guard Pre troopers? the Praetorians. Yes. Oh, Praetorian guard. Yeah, Royal like guard. Uh, they, they, goofy. They, it was kind of goofy for me. That scene was kind of like silly. Oh. It's like last oh. scene. You guys seem like badasses now. You're like, hmm. you like trying to get yeah, the kid off the ceiling. <laughs> He's jumping around, y'all. Motherfucker's small. Um, Anyways, uh, Moff Gideon said, uh, or, or Esposito said, I'm in it a lot. You know what? Motherfucker didn't lie. Motherfucker is in it a lot in a different way than we expect because we see there's like, I don't know, 10 Gideons and clones. So it turns out those bats yes. did actually have multiple clones, which I'm like, wait, what? They already have that technology, uh, you know, so, so then the Emperor, what are we doing with the Emperor? I guess we're trying to perfect the force so that Emperor can transfer force. But does this open the door? Are there already unforced sensitive Emperor clones? Is this how they're bringing in Snoke? Is this how they're bringing in? I like. I don't know, but it it felt a little like okay. And then he does this big villain speech as if it's kind of disconnected yeah. from the rest of the episode. And he is fucking passionate. And this motherfucker putting in his best performance, and I appreciate it. Yeah. But it kind of comes out from left field. He's the Force. You know, I'm 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 creating these Force sensitive uh, clones, um, and so now we get that big reveal. I guess that's why he wanted Grogu. But I need a little bit more connective tissue that the episode because of the short runtime does not have time to show us like remember when um grogu was captured at one point by gideon does that mean they already put the needle in him in in, in, in but I none of this so. stuff we, yeah. we don't yeah, i, to I totally blanks. agree with joe when he says this is rushed because yeah, it is for me this was rushed messy and unsatisfying oh I, I don't know about unsatisfying but yeah uh alex what are you thinking i really like the episode on its own and i think that only on its own um I think the action was super cool. I do agree that the Grogu fight was kind of, it was the lamest of all of the fights because I think that the airborne fights were super cool. Seeing like uh, the equivalent of a rocket sledge just smashing motherfuckers out of the sky. Oh, the armor. Totally sweet. There was a bunch of really cool stuff that, going on. 
Uh, the Grogu being totally, def- you know, jumping around the ceiling was kind of, I, I do agree, is a little bit lame. And then, you know, seeing him only do defensive stuff, um, I, I don't know if I liked as much. I didn't want him to necessarily pick up a yellow yeah, saber or do yeah. anything, but uh, of the fights, do you think I think there's a high degree of, of difficulty training. with yeah. the restrictions of the puppet. Is that what you think factors in a little bit here? Uh, I, I don't think so. I th- I've actually see, heard a lot of people say that they were trying to follow that, you know, I think Yoda at one point said, like, that we use the force to defend, we don't use the force to attack type situation. And that doesn't make, I mean, if you look, Yoda's murdered a fuckload of, of other things. But, like, <laughs> Grogu was definitely doing all defensive stuff this time, and it was a little disappointing, but I think that on, on its own, this episode was really great if I only think about this episode yeah. on its own, because yeah. I completely agree with him that yeah, yeah. everything in this episode is fucking rushed. Everything. And it has everything. to be. because the 41 pre- minutes, and I think that's with credits, I think. Because it's like the previous episode. Like, if we had got a season of this, man, 10 out of 10 season, perfect. Because I think that this episode yeah. on its own is really good. It's not perfect, but it's like 9-10 territory. I think this episode yeah. is really good. That's what the, I'm saying. The problem is you look at it and you sit down, which most people don't do, and they sit on their couch and we talk amongst a group and be like, hey, what do you think about this in the context of everything else? It's like, oh, shit. It just makes everything else more yeah. disappointing. Yeah, that's what critics do. Normal watchers they'll just remember the last episode and like this yeah was recency but recency bias bias is a hell of a thing and then you know like really looking at how why certain things moved into into positions is something that the average watcher doesn't do so great full almost full marks probably full marks on this episode you guys did a great job this could you know did you get get a feeling that this could be the series finale yeah, a little, a li- bit. Like, like, a little bit. That, that it could just be like, oh, it's over. And maybe right, Pedro doesn't want to sign. That ending was like so picture perfect, yeah. and, and they could just leave them there if they need to. Yeah. Like maybe they're having some behind the scene contract issue with Pedro. I don't think so, but I hope everything's okay. Yeah. Um, and that way they can pick it up with Grogu or whatever, put recast, or I don't know. But that's clearly not the case, Alex. This is just, we're talking feelings because he, motherfucker, already has season four written, has already said so. Um, and they actually don't even know when they want to end the Mandalorian proper. Uh, so, yeah. So, I mean, that's that's it. We get our big fucking uh, battle, and uh, <clears throat> we get the conclusion of that storyline. No, um, I never expected this, and I thought people were being a little dumb to expect it, uh, Thrawn coming in, right? No, it's all oh, Thrawn's definitely going to show up because it looks like he's already in the out in the open in the trailer, and Ahsoka's like, nah, man. They're definitely saving that for the assault. Well, they series. mentioned him, which I never thought we would get. So that you got something. Something. <clears throat> yeah. So we're we're good there. Um, yeah. Let's go ahead and do some final verdicts for this episode only, and then we'll jump into the greater context within the whole season. Um, I after thinking about it just a little bit, I think I'm going to give this episode a nine, and I think this episode is <laughs> one of the best. There's a lot of really great stuff. I think I'm going to take away a point because it, it <clears throat> did feel kind of rushed. We got some really great fight scenes. Some of them seem kind of half baked. I really would like to see some of them more flushed out. We got a really cool gauntlet scene that was really like really amazing, like the bow versus Gideon stuff. The the Gideon versus Din stuff was great. Um, it's and it's just all kind of neatly wrapped together with a bow. And I'm trying not to let all of the stink from everything I'm else. I'm too. This one's like ah, I don't it, know. It's but. so hard. It's so hard to do. But I think I'm gonna go with a nine because I think this is a Oof, really really good okay. episode. I was actually pretty satisfied with with how everything turned out. Um. But it did not save the season for me. I'm trying. I'm trying. Like I'm, I'm with everything. Like it's still there. I'm gonna have to go with the seven. Um, I feel like everything was rushed. Uh, it was just like I didn't. I wanted more Moff Gideon throughout the season. I have a better thing to just talk about. Is like, oh, Moth is somewhere here. He's gonna come out. Last two seasons. Well, I'm talking about the series as a whole. You are. Uh, this episode, um, again, I uh, liked the fight scenes. I uh, wish there was some more dog fights, but whatever. Yeah. That would have been cool to see. It's like, oh, the uh, backups arrived. Yeah, they don't really use their up. Mando ships. They just say, uh, Bo-Katan has a line. We, we we're going to beat him on the ground. And, yeah, and, but I was hoping like once the backup arrives, they kind of gun down and start shooting some other stuff, see they some more stuff. They might have just been outnumbered in the air. So. Yeah, probably. 
But yeah, I'm, I don't know. I'm just not feeling it, man. I'm trying. But That's I'm okay, seven. Joe. Stay true to yourself. I am a seven. Seven on the ending because it was messy, yes. uh, short, rush, and not as satisfying as you were hoping. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I am also going to go with a nine. I was between an eight and a nine, and I think overall was satisfied if I just take this episode on its own. On its own. I'm thinking, wow, this is some great CGI for television level. We have movie level CGI and action for television week after week. Um, I, I just, I can really see an eight, you know, for, for the uh, small runtime. If you're doing a conclusion and you have a lot of the story, I'm going down to an eight. Going down into an eight because of the uh, the the reduced runtime. Yeah. For the love of God, you've been spinning your wheels at certain areas in this season with some filler episodes, and then Moff Gideon in the last two only. We needed uh, more exploration here. At times, the pacing has even in this episode has seemed like we're on a sightseeing tour. Like the Mandos go to this underground cave for less than two minutes and then they're like let's go it's what the fuck did we come here for just to say oh we grow food here okay you don't like, need to do that. but but that is the cave system is amazing it's beautiful there's dangerous creatures there's farming there's repopulating the planet that could have been its own episode fighting fucking or monsters and the season and that could have been like the whole right. thing exactly the, the writing this, yeah. the, this whole series is being written as it's a 26 episode clone wars yes. season and the problem is you only get eight minute eight yeah. episodes and then that's why things just don't match up and so it's like i love the idea of them showing and world building with mandalore showing off the food show like going to a, to a Blade Runner mission. Fuck it. I don't give a shit. Jack Black shows up and Lizzo's over there and she can't act. That works if you give me 30 fucking episodes. If you give me eight, you got you don't have time to do anything but get to the fucking point. Yep. Is that what Joe and Alex don't like? It was, like a it was a silly scene. It was Shut for up. the kids. It was no. for the kids. Like, oh, I, 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 I liked Grogu. I liked his moments. I didn't think it was quite quite as... Yeah, well, he is laughing and he's giggling. Yeah. He's having a good time while he's about to die. Uh, but I think that, you know, the, the, the restriction of how small Grogu is and his little little limbs and his little feet... But you, you never really get to see his feats. Um, it's difficult to do. And, le and, and, and George had the same problem with Yoda. So he just said, fuck it. Yoda's a badass in lightsaber, even though it seems like Yoda's old and decrepit. And so Yoda's doing, <laughs> is that eventually where Grogu is going to get? Would that satisfy Alex and Joe and other people? I don't know. I think also, but too, like I wanted Bo-Katan to kind of get the upper hand. I know like not defeat Moth Gideon. But just kind of get the upper hand. She's like, look, you <clears throat> beat me. You bested me before, but now she could kind of have her little. So, Bo, uh, so clearly, Moff Gideon is in power armor, and he's able to handle pretty much anybody one on one. That was the point of that scene. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I forgot to mention the dark saber has now been destroyed. Yeah. I can't believe I, I haven't about shown to off say my that dark next. saber. I don't have my dark saber. I'm not going to stop the whole episode to go run and get <laughs> I don't know it. Where it is. Um, and it sucks because you know, <sighs> god damn it. Uh, so maybe the dark saber's gone. Maybe they'll be able to repair it. I don't fucking know. I don't know who would know how to repair that. Only I guess Luke would have to come back and repair that. So I think the dark saber is gone. So it's fitting that I don't have it here. Darn it. Anyways, um, so we ha we have the that conclusion to the dark saber. Uh, really doesn't matter, I guess. Uh, I also was expecting um, a mythosaur appearance. No mythosaur. We kind have of. an eye opening. Again. Uh, cool. That's not a mythosaur appearance. That is, uh, you know, teasing for the future. So um, that's about it. So I'm going to go with an 8 out of 10 and uh, a satisfying uh, uh, conclusion for me to the episode, but not enough to save season three. Um, let's go on to our season finale and, or a season three as a whole uh, review. So I'll begin. And I think that I like season one and two better. Oh, for sure. For sure. This we is the worst season of the Mandalorian, but <clears throat> when I say worst, I mean, um, it's, it's bigger, it's more colorful, it's varied, uh, there's a lot of action, uh, I like the characters and the side characters, but I think the writing has gone down a magnitude, I think, uh, the, uh, what the fuck moments, or that doesn't quite make sense moments, have risen, and, uh, a little bit of, meandering and 
uh, l loss of focus, uh, maybe spinning wheels because they have to align things in other episodes because Mandalorian seems to be this jumping off point for this new universe for Dave Filoni and, and John Favreau to set up multiple different series to then culminate into a big uh, movie event. And they were like, well, fuck, uh, where we're at with the Mandalorian going too fast, let's just do a whole season where they retake Mandalore. You know, and, and in that, Grogu and Din Djarin are sidelined for most of it as we give uh, focus to Bo-Katan. So, yep. yeah, Week, what about y'all? I 100% agree with that. Like, for <coughs> two, it was like... Vastly superior to this. This was just was just spinning its wheels. Uh, like honestly, I didn't know where they were going next episode. They're like a lot of them just felt like fillers. It wasn't like a cohesion a cohesive story, like throughout the whole thing. Like I I want like I like we said earlier, I wanted it to be like the whole thing. Just try to take over Mandalore. We'll see some cool stuff underneath. Fight some monsters. And whereas we need some backup, let's find some other yeah. Mandalorians and. And then introduce uh, Moth Gideon, mm -hmm. third episode maybe. Yeah, he's like, oh shit, he's here. Yeah, if we did we this in find a, a way different to... order, I think we could have we could have saved, saved some it, of something, it. Something, but uh, thankfully, there's no fucking karate tournament that I was thinking. Thankfully, a lot of the Star Wars leaks were bullshit. I mean, they got some of it right, but then they totally made up some shit. They said that Grogu was going to get in this robot. They predicted that correctly, but then they said they were, he was going to fight the kid at the end in a little tournament and in his robot and the little Paz Vizsla son and they were just gonna have a fight like, that's like, oh, not my fair God, that's fucking stupid right <laughs> well, exactly you would kill that kid, unless so, the kid uh, yeah it was just kind of a so at least it didn't place. get that stupid mm -hmm. so didn't really enjoy it as much right yeah this was a super disappointing season and um it, it's like half the writers are writing for an eight episode <laughs> season and the other half are writing for a 26 episode season and you yep. just you didn't give yourself enough time, which is a which is a shame because I think Disney wants more content. They want more viewable hours on, on oh, the platform, sure. and I just don't see a reason for the, some of the episodes to be so short. I don't see a reason for some of the storylines to be so rushed. And if you want to give me fun filler episodes where we do Blade Runner shit, I'm all for it. Just add that on to the total season. Like make this a 13 episode season. Like do other things with it because eight episodes just for me is not enough to have multiple side story missions no where fuck around. yeah and, and it's, again it's like we watch so many series where they can go on, off and do fun side missions because there's plenty of time to like get back on track with the main mission and this just isn't it so i think that they they really kind of are meandering they didn't have a set plan i don't know if john uh, dave is working on his own shit and he's not he as is. and is, he's not as so on this and then john's working on his own shit and yep. he's not closely on this and they're just like rick you get to direct a bunch of things and he's like well i don't know how to do this action scene it's like well could figure it out bro and then a bunch of other people are coming in but it feels like the, the what made the two, first two seasons special is this used to be dave and john's baby and they were babysitting yep. it really closely and now it definitely feels like Dave's gone off because his real main baby, the Ahsoka series, Ahsoka. he's focusing on. Yeah. And that's what – it just feels like they're not paying as much attention, and you've got people who don't care as much or who – I mean, it sucks to say, but aren't as talented as those two, and they don't just they, – they couldn't recapture the magic that the first two guys did. Yeah. And so it just feels like a pretty massive step down from seri uh, the, the series one and two. Without these two over their shoulder, because we're using the same directors from the other seasons. Yeah. Anyways, um, completely agree. So let's go season verdict, and then we'll do the breakdown for episode eight, which I skipped. I forgot, but uh, let's do season overall verdicts. Who wants to go first? I don't know. Are we comparing this to the Mando c series only? Disney, like it's because yeah, it's so, so hard. Yeah, so I'm, hmm, I'm like six, seven. Yeah, is where I'm I was at. gonna give it. I'm, a, to I'm gonna say out. I'll go first. I was gonna say a six. Okay, this is slightly above average. There's some good moments, but overall, you just left with wondering like, where the fuck, what the fuck happened to the writers? Mm -hmm. it, it's Still not, writing. it's not the same. It just like, didn't feel it, the same. No, it's like. And then and by the time they righted the ship, you're like, why wouldn't we doing this the whole time? Mm -hmm. Why didn't you do that? Why didn't you? Yeah. yeah, halfway, like more than halfway through, so, like, they try to course correct. I guess that's some kind late. of hope for season four that it's like, okay, I, I feel know. like I feel like we're back on track. And I feel like we can we can have our solo, you know, Mandalorian Grogu adventures across the galaxy. We're kind of set up for that now. Um, 
you but know. But after watching this, I'm just like, <clears throat> not This excited. basically handles the Gideon uh, storyline. Now, Is it, he it doesn't dead? close. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't close the door on the Gideon, which they don't want to do because, hey, you know, there's contracts and popularity and this and that. They need to take a look at it. If they close it, they can. If they want to bring him back, it could be a clone with force powers or he could be the original. That armor was super strong. Maybe it did. Uh, it manages to survive the explosion. So that is a possibility. But I think Mando and Grogu are now uh, getting a well-earned rest until shit pops off in Ahsoka and Thrawn comes back and they get roped into it. And they get roped into it via, you know, Mandalore. Mandalore gets roped into the war. And so, of course, Grogu and um, Din Djarin are roped in. So that's what I'm thinking. And then it culminates in defeating Thrawn in the film that Dave Filoni is scheduled to do from Kathleen Kennedy. We won't actually see Thrawn get defeated until we get to I that I want film. Thrawn to win. Win. <laughs> All righty. Well, uh, yeah. So you're six. we're going with a six, Alex. We're comparing like you're comparing it to like all yes. all, all TV. <clears throat> no, not all TV. Just all TV main. would go up to a seven. Oh, yeah, we're this is way better than Picard. This is a ten. Yeah, Picard, uh, Picard season, season one. one and two. That's a ten out of ten. <laughs> yeah. ten, ten out of ten. Yeah, this is this is still pretty good TV. And I know what people think that we're hard on some of the stuff. It's like, look, the degree of diff, like this is. There, this is really good stuff, but you've shown us how good everything else can be. Uh, and, like, it just feels like they, they, they left all these kids unsupervised, and then Dave and John said, like, oh, I'll help you with the finale. Don't worry. Just finish the rest of your homework. And then everything's done in crayon. And at the very end, it's like they're like when they're looking at it, it, yeah. it works out. <laughs> so I think I can agree with the six. I think this is definitely above average TV because there's definitely stuff to enjoy here. But there's all sorts of garbage. And it's... You look, I just want to know the people who have been, you know, I don't want to say dick riding, but I'm going to say dick riding this season, the entire goddamn time where they're just like, oh, that's amazing every single episode. It's like they're calling the middle ones perfect. Those are just fa fans and fanboys. You're never going to get them to admit to any type of criticism. If something is playing and it's shiny and they're yeah. then, then, then they're well, fine. That's, that's what I'm this, curious about. This is why we have jobs, because we go a little deeper. Yeah, that's it. why I'm curious. It's like if you thought that the Lizzo episode was a 10 out of 10 and you watch this, it's just like, is this a 14 out of 10 to you? Right. Well, you need the big monsters. See, that's, the big that's monsters the logic awesome. of the fanboys, Jen, but there, you cannot apply the logic. Yeah, it's like this, like this episode They'll is... They'll just be like, no, that was a 10, and this, this is, is a 10. 10. And everything's a 10, and I, like everything is most... I just had Applebee's last night. It was the most epic thing I've ever seen eaten in my entire fucking life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The prices on the drinks, though. Two dollars, two dollars long. That's that's. Uh, but I think yeah, I think this is for the food. It's still a pretty good series. I still enjoyed a lot of what I watched, but it does it leaves me to believe that I think that this series is getting abandoned because no, 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 no. Oh, I definitely do. I think I, I, 100%. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, it's not. It's not. This is not getting abandoned for the future. But we, I think, what we're picking up yeah. on, Alex, is that for this season, it was. No, I think it's getting abandoned for the future. No, I think John and Dave no. are going to go off and do their own shit. You don't think Dave Filoni is a hundred percent focused on Ahsoka right now? I, I and do then, think. And then his movie. One hundred percent of focus on Ahsoka. And it, but uh, they're not giving up on the Mandalorian. The Mandalorian is their central gem on Disney Plus that allows all these other series and has interconnected. Connected to this series, they're not canceling. I it's didn't say they're canceling. Over. I didn't say any of that. I think Dave and John are abandoning this project. I don't. Th I think that Rick and I think okay, that, well, that Bryce House. I, I think that Dave is going to be focusing on Ahsoka and then his movie, and I think that John is going to be doing his own other things. And I just think that they're like this was the, the tester season where they're going to figure out can these other people rise up and write and direct their own thing with a they're going to produce and they're going to write every now and then. But I think that how's that site? abandoning? Because that the they're going to write and produce and also do exactly what they've been doing for the previous seasons for season four and five. I guarantee you that John is locked in to The Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. So by definition, that's not abandonment. And I guarantee you that Dave, while he does have his pet project, Ahsoka, which is rightfully his and he's very excited mm -hmm. about it, he will continue to make guest appearances in the writ written by column for season four yeah. and five. It's just, so I just disagree, but that's okay. We can disagree. Yeah, so one and two, they were focused and they, they did everything and they were 100% on board. And I don't think that they were here and I don't think that they will be for four and five. Okay. All right, so uh, final verdicts. Then Joe was a uh, six. six. Mm -hmm. Alex was a six. six. And mm -hmm. I think I'm going to have to agree with you all. I'm going to go with a, where we'll land at six. Six out of ten. This is above average.
But this is on the Mandalorian scale, not the Star Wars, Pic- uh, Star Trek Picard Star. scale, or or uh, you know other That's shitty TV shit scale. Um, yeah. So going back, let's see, John, 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 Dave, J- Dave. So Dave had one written credit in the season two. So did Dave uh, abandon season two? No. Uh, and then let's check the season one, all written by John. Dave had one credit in season one. So Dave had the most uh, credits in season three. Mm. Anyways, uh, so we've got the se- we got episode eight reviewed. We've got season three reviewed. Let us know what your opinions are on those particular things. But let's do a quick breakdown of this particular episode because we may have missed some stuff. So the uh, starts immediately with uh, Bo-Katan and group running through the halls under attack. Um, and I, and I, I just keep bothers me that how did the scavenger Mandos not know about the Imperial presence? They're poorly written, yep. and they didn't think about anything. So yeah. here's what I was thinking. Here's what I was thinking is like one of them is a spy, right? They do know, or they're both spies, and they'll turn on them. So that's what I kept waiting to happen because that would have explained it perfectly, mm-hmm. You're right? You're trying to fix it. Right, I'm trying to <laughs> yeah. fix some of the Don't plot holes for them. Yeah. But, you know, I guess when no. there's so many pieces going, uh, these motherfuckers uh, need one more script doctor. They need to hire Alex, Angry Joe, and Joe to help them out. So dinner, uh, dinner, Din Dijarin breaks free, stupid autocorrect. And you get hungry. <laughs> Me <yeah>. too. <laughs> well, uh, so he beats up. Some of these troopers, I do appreciate how it's not just instant, bah, 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 and he fucking beats their ass. No, you know, he's knocking them around. They're in armor. He's in armor, the guy, the trooper has. And I'm watching the troopers to see if it's that hilarious incompetence in The Last Jedi of people going, you know, swinging their saber for no reason. Just waiting, while for, their waiting turn. for their turn. No, this motherfucker gets knocked over. He gets up almost instantly and draws his blaster and he starts firing. So I, I thought that was going to uh, be more of an impact. It's like, oh shit, they captured him. But he's like, oh, yes. I'm out. Uh, there were rumors, people saying, oh, this is another opportunity for him to take his helmet off yeah. so we can see uh, d- uh, but, Pedro Pascal. Nope. Uh, so that's a little disappointing yeah. there. I, I understand you, Joan. I have mad respect for you given this the episode because you may be right. Um, as we go through these things, we usually <laughs> lower our score. Yeah. Uh, as Ale- a- a- Axe is flying up through the atmosphere. It's rude, And baby. this is where <laughs> Joan made the point. It's a fantastic point. I even write it here. I was like, how can he fly that far from the ground to the atmosphere to the space? And yet, they don't have the jetpack fuel to follow the bird to rescue their sons. But not only that, he when it was coming down, he had enough to continue to fly. To continue like, to fly right. off. Yeah, so ridiculous. Like, what the fuck? Ridiculous. He, he, he had like a reserve tank or something. Just sh- hey, shut up. we did this for The Last Jedi. We did this for The Rise of Skywalker. You kids. bet your ass we're going to do it for here because we're consistent. They okay? don't care about the kids. This ain't the That's fandom why. channel. This is the <laughs> fucking Angry Joe show, which will give it to you brutal. Now, um, that was stupid. Uh, so then he needs R5 to uh, do, you know, this scaredy cat uh, mm-hmm. gets a little scene here uh, to help him uh, locate where Gideon I might be located. Show. What? I hate that every single Imperial base, like any fucking droid you bring in, can hack into their mainframe immediately and be like, I was Muff thinking Gideon's that. pooping right, right now. It's like, can you not have a port that, that like, is like every robot can hack into? The computer should be on lockdown where it's like, if anybody accesses any ports, I want to know where yeah. it's being accessed. But we've allowed that in Star Trek, uh, you, so we just start, you start, Trek, start, start Wars. Wars. Yeah. I, yeah, they're definitely doing the homage to the <clears> previous <throat> ones, but it's like every time it's like, this is kind of dumb. Here's another thing I'm not showing, I'm not prepared. Is that I have a mouse droid. I bought a mouse droid, the little remote control thing, and it was like a hundred bucks. No, it was like sixty bucks. I got it on sale, and uh, it has this little pop up that fires rockets. Sweet. So I kept thinking that the mouse droid, once it gets pissed off and it finds somebody, woo woo, and they would fire some rockets, and the droid R five would dodge it or something. Well, apparently this is the mouse droid not equipped with rockets. It is instead equipped with I'm going to smash your toes. Uh, so if, if anybody is ever found in the base, then he will alert others and they'll come. Uh, but 
the others he alerts are other mouse droids and not any kind of uh, Beskar uh, troopers or anything like that. They're Anyways, beep, beep, beep. So they, they ram him a little bit. Uh, R5 uh, shocks him and runs off and manages to get Mando the information he needs while helping him open the motherfucking... I was like, uh-oh, we got a shield barrier. It's going to be a fandom menace thing. I kept worrying that we would have uh, Grogu stuck behind one and Mando stuck behind Anybody else have that mm. feeling? Uh, is anybody else out there? Uh, thankfully, they avoid that. Uh, they re- really just use this moment to give uh, Din Djar in his moment to shine and kick some ass. Sword and board combat. shit. It was super sweet watching it. And then it. when he dropped the sword to pick up the blaster, it was like, oh, I don't know. You were doing really well with that sword. Why don't you keep the baton and just batch it? For sure. Um, and then basically, <clears throat> um, uh, meanwhile, Axe reaches the ship. Uh, in orbit, tells them to abandon ship. The cap. We're going to use the capital decoy. ship as a decoy yeah. and get to the smaller ships. Go, and he'll man the thing. So when he was like manning the ship, I was like, "Ah, oh, motherfucker's dead. He's going to, you know, do go down with the ship to distract everybody." So I was like, "All right, good. A glorious death for Axe. Never really liked his character, so we could do something <laughs> that I like." Anyways. Uh, the barrier shields, uh, you know, um, he's able, uh, R5 is able to bring down the final barrier shield just in time, and motherfucking Din Djarin kills everybody. And then it's shown a little uh, Grogu here. Whoop. <laughs> he's like, oh, okay, well, now it's safe. It's like, God damn it, Grogu, why'd you help him? You could have helped him he if you wanted. But no, he's a stable. He's got him. limited force powers. Yeah, and plus he's really slow, so I guess the excuse here is that, you know, the barrier shields and all that shit. Yeah, robots too much. There was a point here where I was mad for, like, a second, and then it, it, they fix it later, but where Gideon's like, no, no one go fight them. Leave them to me. I will fight the Force Child and, and Mando myself. And I was like, ooh, that's a bad choice, my friend. <clears throat> but then yeah. the Praetorian show up. I was like, okay, okay. I, I yeah, that I was a really great yeah. moment to see. Well, we're skipping a little ahead, but I want to point out, we, Mando's getting his ass kicked. By Gideon, uh, we'll call him um, Darth Gideon. Yes, and and that's it. Like he doesn't even need royal guards. Then the royal guards show mm-hmm. up, and you're like, oh, that's a great. Moment. They were just gonna sit and it's like, make sure the boss is boss winning. Okay, uh, well now oh, let's come shit, here. It's no, about to go down <laughs> yeah. now. Uh, no, 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 no. We're not jumping ahead. <laughs> we're, we're rewinding. So. Um, he fights him a little through the shields. It looks cool as hell. Uh, and then the uh, uh, they see tubes of clones just nonstop. I'm thinking there's probably about 20 of them, 18, 12, whatever. And when you zoom in, they're all Gideon. So motherfucker. And then one of them opens his eyes. So it's like, fuck, is this the real Gideon? So we have to remember, this may not even be the real Gideon that he's fighting, but he does say, you ruined all my clones. Mm-hmm. That's why I was like, God damn it, you ruined it with the line. He's like, they didn't even get a moment to breathe or something. Yeah. They took their first, before they took their first breath, you killed all my clones. Don't say that, Gideon. Just say, you ruined my plans. I want the I'm you, you're me moment where <laughs> yeah. they're like the, the pickle Will Gideons you? are talking. Oh, yeah, <laughs> naked pickle, G- yeah. pickle Gideon comes out. <laughs> I'm the real Gideon. Oh, you're a clone. That would have been fucking sweet. Yeah. But there is still an opportunity for that if they want to do like some burn face Gideon you know it'd be pretty fucking sweet in the future so it's still there even though he basically says you, you've killed all my clones and I'm like wait wait what so you the clone uh, uh, did you talk with I guess this is Pershing this is all Pershing's research mm-hmm. I suppose but the the um, as Hux. motions no the uh, fucking I just got the name wrong uh, the skinny headed uh, aliens that made all the clones. Oh, yeah. The, oh, uh, um, I don't I we'll know. We'll call what them uh, the, the, uh, as. Uh, Shit. As, fuck! Goddamn Star Wars names. Kami- they're from Camino. Camino! Oh, yeah, Camino. Camino, yes. Camonians. Camonians. Uh, did they did consult Gideon? Because I don't know how prevalent cloning technology is, but it makes it seem like this is nothing. And I guess, uh, but then it makes me wonder, well, why haven't they done that for the Emperor, you know? Um, and I guess they are implying that with Project Necromancer, but what makes it more difficult is because they want to clone the Emperor with his force powers. With his midichlorians. Rather yeah. than without him. So we have that explanation. Next is Grogu comes in um, after, oh, no, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, why didn't the Emperor have clones then? We already addressed that. Scavenger Mandos. This is where we get our scene. Everybody run. There's a hole in the wall. Let's go that way. 
So I thought their scavenger mandos were kind of like distracting them and putting them in one area so that they would be ambushed. And they're like, come check out this cave. And I was like, oh, cool. And then they're like, in this cave, this cool. This was literally. And we're like, yeah. Okay, bye. Yeah, this that was literally cool. the scene. It was like, all right, we're safe here. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Look. <laughs> And someone it <laughs> was to regroup. It was to meet up with the other Mandos. But it was still funny. Anytime I still someone agree. comes over, I show my garden. I'm very proud of my garden. I do a lot of gardening, and I want you to see it. Man, Alex, I, I, we I, don't I, got time for this. They're I was just showing it. I got time for this. Like, you look at those Alex, plants outside. Food no, 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 no. no. You look at those plants. Garden. Those are good-looking plants, right? <laughs> so where yeah, the food at? We grew them ourselves. All right. Man, we ain't I got, got, I got a drip right system right there. I just put down 15 bags of mulch. That's a nice garden right there. And then the armorer says, your feet reinforcements have arrived. And from this moment, I know she's not going to be a traitor. She's not going to turn or yeah, anything like that. She's leading the reinforcements. And plus, they always need this, like, uh, mentor to hand down, somebody in charge to then give, um, what do you call it, precedence to the next person or give um, um, gravitas to the next person. She was the one who bonded everyone. Right. <clears throat> so the two forces then say, are, are, once they meet up with the reinforcements, they're like, let's go kick your ass and we'll take our planet back. And and then the two forces clash in the air with jetpacks. That was cool. Sweet. I like that. And yeah, and then basically... Um, then we go to the fight scene between uh, Darth Gideon and uh, you know Din Djarin, and you hear nee, nee, and you're like, oh fuck, this this armor's powered, mm -hmm. so any punch is gonna be, be motherfucking crushed, and they fight, and it's cool, and he's getting his ass beat basically. <clears throat> And I wish I could see the armor a little better. Maybe it was just a little dark on my projector. I wanted to make that lighten that bad up, bad boy up, because I love this armor. I want to wear this armor. I want to buy nice. this armor. But it looks fucking elaborate. You get little blinking lights. So the cosplayers are like, God damn it, I have to do the fucking lights here. Light. This man. But it looks cool. And I want to see people. Rider thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is that what I just said? The little lights here. Right. And anyway, so why didn't the. Uh, oh, oh, so then he beats him. And Grogu runs in. He's like, no, 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 no. Then the guards are distracted uh, because the royal guards are the ones that came in and start beating beating Mando up. And they come after him instead. So I guess instead of the guards just finishing off, you know, Dan, they could have done that or set left one or two behind and had one. One just to keep him stunned the whole time because yeah. he's a But, baby. you know, whatever. I'll give it to them. And they, they motherfucking follow it. It's a, it's a powerful scene and a, a sad scene because it's like, Oh, shit, that little IG uh, fucking robot droid is not going to be able to do anything against these royal guards. So you feel the danger. You feel like, oh, Grogu might get beat up if uh, Din doesn't go over there and help. And he tries to, gets shot in the back with a rocket, gets fucking harpooned, uh, and he's not able to save him. <clears throat> so, um, but thankfully, Grogu is having a great time. Grogu is laughing as he's parkouring and running around, and he's giggling. <laughs> he's having a good time until my fucking royal guards cut down. <laughs> get down, get down, kid. <laughs> they just oh, they're just so incompetent looking. They're supposed to be so badass. <laughs> they were whenever that's they what's killed funny the other me. one. Like, yeah, they they train. They don't train to fight this little thing like this. So that's why I think the ju juxtaposition works. The Royal Guards uh, basically cannot get him. Uh, no. Bo-Katan sees the fight between uh, Gideon and uh, Mando. She comes over to help, and she says, I got this, and go save your kid. And then, da -da, and then Grogu and Mando take the Grogu Royal Guards stuck, together. They and chop I love, off some of the, the little scaffold or whatever. It falls. Get stuck. And then here tube, comes our hero. Tube falls on him. Uh, Grogu is pushing aside weapons, pushing aside royal guards. Uh, like Alex says, mainly defensive maneuvers, not a single, like, or uh, Yoda whips out a lightsaber and beats us up. It's like, God damn it, Grogu, if you just kept a little green lightsaber that, you know, fucking Luke had or something like that. Or just twist the spine of the guy. And it's like you lifted up a giant rhino Ooh, monster and just, like, picked him up. And go, right. like, oh, nope, not a problem anymore, I boss. I think Grogu's going to do that. Only well, we can let his dad but dive But they in. take on the royal guards together. It was cute. It was awesome. It worked. And I liked it. So then uh, Axe... Motherfucking says, um, I'm going to take out the base by crashing the ship into it. Get everybody out. It's like, Axe, uh, you know, <laughs> are you, you just, 
I would have liked for them to have been like, hey, can you get everybody out in time? I have an idea. I'm going to take out the base with this. And she could have been like, yes, all right. I, I think I, I think we can. And then she gives the order, but she's in mid-fight. He's and just he going to crash it. Like, I think there are a few Mandos that maybe died because Axe decided to crash his ship in there and they're in mid-fight. And they're like, what? He says, get out of here now. But what? Nobody told me about this. <laughs> He should have been like, well, Can, you're amazing. I should have uh, followed you a long time ago. I'm going to die because I ran out of fuel. <laughs> right, my jetpack is out of fuel. Yes. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Fuck. But no, it's, he shoots a rocket at the window and smartly leaves. He was and Paz up Vizsla, the whole time. Paz Vizsla, uh, ghost Paz Vizsla is like, eh, 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 heal me. <laughs> you can do like, that? Oh, shit, we got rocket packs, <laughs> and, and this room doesn't have a ceiling, and, and, and I could have escaped. I could have gone to literal and space. Axe is like, you're a dumbass, bro. And he's like, not fair. Because Paz Vizsla, let's be fair, he's not, he wasn't the most intelligent He's one of the there. dumbest he's characters the dumbest in all man. of Star Wars right. now. He, he's, he's pretty dumb. Uh, so I think it fits his character. He won honor. I, I refuse to leave this battle. I will sacrifice myself even though I can live. And I have a son that's now going to be an orphan. Fuck my son. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you know, because the <laughs> bird can have him. The birds can have him. <laughs> Uh, Alex, uh, Alex, Axe uh, takes out the base by crashing into it. But first, we have to discuss the Bo-Katan fight yes. where she is, uh, you know, doing well, but then gets her ass kicked because he crushes the dark saber. Dun, dun, dun. Mm -hmm. Crushes it. It is you've lost. You lost the dark saber. The Mandos are weak. And she goes, Mandos are stronger together. Apes. Planet of the Apes. No, they do that. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and yeah. So then they attack him. Three on one. Mandalorian Dindajaran shows up. Mandalorian Apprentice Grogu shows up. And he's force pushing. Uh, Mando shooting. And she's attacking. And they were able to basically... Uh, hold them off for long enough for the ship to hit the motherfucking base and a huge fireball explosion. Motherfucking Bo Katan thinks her little pee boob shield is going to help. She was them. just trying to save I know. the baby. What okay. do you think their plan well, was? Well, she was saving the baby, would be down here. Yeah. She did up here like a moron. Yeah. So, like, they know that the place is going to explode. They know that they're in the center of the blast zone and there's, like, no urgency to, like, kick his ass and get out of there. They're just like, we're going to fight and we're going to die fighting this, this guy. This is what I'm saying. It's like, thanks, Axe. Woven, you yeah. couldn't have been like, because he could crash it. He can maybe move the ship, and could, if he's directing it towards the base, yeah. he's like, "Do you have enough time to get everybody out?" Yes, I'm giving the order. Everybody evacuate. Just a small little script doctor would have worked, but he's like, "I'm just gonna crash my ship." So, so, she didn't even say okay. Nobody says okay. None of the other men are I guess they all heard him. Mm -hmm. So then uh, it, it blows up and Grogu uses a force shield bubble again. Another defensive power. And I was like, I didn't know you could do that. I Gideon thought we were dead. Defeated again. Yeah. Now, we don't actually see. I mean, we do see him engulfed by flames, but he is in badass armor. We've seen his clones be. Uh, uh, again, Disney rolled no body. Blown out. Right. We didn't, <laughs> I didn't see the body uh, like that or something like yeah, that. He'll so be back. hopefully, it's unclear if Gideon is dead or if any of his clones survived. But we can say. We put the kibosh on his plan. He's probably alive. He's, he's dead. Or because his forces are fucked now. Because his, he, you, those suits go into space, no problem. They re-enter an atmosphere, no problem. Mm -hmm. They can take a little bit of heat, right? Yeah, temporarily. And maybe there's a shuttle waiting for him. Because we actually never see it. Never get to, didn't get to talk about this. We don't see a conclusion to Pershing. So he's still mind-wiped somewhere. Don't see a conclusion to Kane. Never see Kane again. It's like, eh, devote a whole fucking hour episode to that. And eh, don't worry about it. She's not even in the final. What the fuck, man? Yeah. Are you serious? All right. Uh, I guess, well, <laughs> season four, she'll be in it. So, uh, man, then we go to the Mandalorian ceremony. And fucking Ragnar here, god damn it, finishes off his stupid ceremony. Because last time his ceremony got interrupted. Mm -hmm. So we finished his ceremony. They pour water on his helmet. <laughs> no alligator this time. <clears throat> no alligator. The mythosaur <laughs> comes out and eats the kid, and the armor is like, ah, fuck it. We can't. This kid. It's all right. We don't value luck. children here. We'll just go steal some kids from somewhere else. Yeah. So uh, then uh, little Grogu comes down and, and then puts him uh, on the steps and says, uh, he, let's take the oath for him to become an official Mandalorian. And the armor wants to be a dick for no reason, but no, it's because she's like, goading him on to do what is right and 
adopt him. And so Dan adopts him because she's like, his parents may be dead. Who knows? Uh, you know, wink, can't wink. do it. And he's like, all right, all right. Well, I will adopt him Didn't as my son. Through. He is my child, and I give permission. And she's like, granted. And so now... This it is, is Din Grogu, not just Grogu, Din Grogu. I didn't know Din was a sir. I thought Din was the first name. So it's like, it's as if it's like, you are now Grogu Joey Yoda. It's like, oh, Joe Yoda. It's like, wait, what? Okay, so maybe Din is a surname or something. Dejarin is his real name and Din is a I don't know. Knight of Ren or something. So, but if you think about it, it's like, and now you're a Mandalorian apprentice and you must go on journeys. And I'm like, man, this sounds a lot like the Jedi and the Mandalorian. Did, you, did somebody get hit in the head and they confused Jedi for Mandalorians? But to be fair, the Mandalorian founder was a Jedi, uh, you know, with the Darksaber. So I, I guess it makes sense. Some of their traditions are very similar. The Mythosaur opens his eyes at this moment. And um, yeah. Oh, I forgot they gave the torch to, to Bo-Katan so she could reignite the forge on Mandalore. She's definitely united the clans and stuff. Uh, no karate tournament, but, you know. So, Din and Grogu, uh, before they go home, they go to the planet with the rebel pilot, Carson Tevas. And they say, hey, this is season four. I need a setup for season four. And they say, well, all right, well, wait, you're going to work for the New Republic? And they're like, yeah, well, limited basis. Only, only your cool jobs that we like and so uh all we ask for in return is uh i don't know din grogu sees a little head of uh, ig um, i guess teasing that maybe he'll get his uh his mech suit back i'm not sure i want the mech suit back i think the mech suit served its purpose uh yeah tell us what you think do you want to see grogu in mech suit in the future or without mech suit in the future uh, then he goes, uh, makes another stop at Grief Karga, um, and he basically says, you still got the plot of land, it could be your home in between your adventures, and he says, all right, sweet. I saved your whole fucking planet, your whole planet. I installed you as the mayor, and this is the fucking shack you gave me, you yes. little bitch. It's a tiny fucking Oh, uh, that's shack. the house that Grogu lives in, right? Where's my fucking house, <laughs> yeah, asshole? That is Grogu's um, house, that would be nice. <laughs> it's like, that's, He's a simple and not man. only that, but he gives him He's a fucking a gift. Man. Mando shows up with a gift for yes. Grief Karga and it's IG-11. Yay, we tied up that l plot line that nobody gave a shit about and he's, I'm the new marshal. Uh, Taika Waititi's voice, I guess, yeah. is here. So I have my, my cameo. So I guess that means that he's not writing the dude. He, they use that head for the marshal. So yeah. we're, I guess we're good. Um, on their plot of land, Grogu is seen lifting frogs. Torturing animals. Oh, they are like like serial killers. Excuse me, what? He's like... He is Children, a baby. look. If you he have if you have toddlers and stuff hurting small out. animals, you need uh, to keep an eye on them. No, he was just lifting them no, to Alex, eat him. If you ever risen a child, quite clearly you haven't. Now, if your toddler <laughs> is a little baby and he's squeezing a cat, or he just like wants Grogu's to play with a cat, a baby. that's fine. He's a toddler. <laughs> now, when that kid grows up and is like fucking nine, ten, eleven, twelve years old, Grogu's and he's still 60. torturing animals, then yeah, you got a problem. <laughs> Grogu is sixty in Yoda years. I don't know what the fuck that means. I think he's still a baby. Anyways, um, it is a bit rushed in the end. I think we all agree. I think even you agree. Don't you fucking lie, motherfuckers out here. 10 out of 10. 10 you still 10. think it's been <laughs> rushed in the end. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Then we get the Looney Tunes uh, little happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all, folks. <laughs> Uh, characters spend like three minutes at locations, uh, movie level CGI and TV form every week. Um, I'm coming in hot. Clear out the base. I wrote here. It should have been. Can you do you have time to clear out the base? No. And she's like, yes, I got time. All right. All Mando's evacuated. So, yes, ma'am. And then fixed. Uh, the Mandalorian traditions are very similar to Jedi foundlings to apprentice. And I guess master of teaching the apprentice training and go on your journeys. So we're going to see that. And so now instead of Luke being his uh, apprentice, and that's why, well, how come we never heard of Luke's apprentice, Grogu? It's because it's Din Djarin's apprentice. And uh, I just wrote these things. Where's Cobb Vanth? Cobb Vanth was last seen in a back to tank, right? So he it's like, well, did Cad Bane kill him? Uh, did he die from his wounds or did he recover? It would have been nice. He's the marshal. Not some f IG-11. What the fuck? I guess they couldn't pay Timothy Oliphant to come back. He's going to be marshal of his little town. I guess. You're right. And then where's Cara Dune? Oh, gone. 
And uh, Meg, is it name Meg Mayfield? Uh, what's this guy's name? You remember the comedian? Uh, Bill, uh, no, uh, not Bill. The comedian. Oh, oh yeah, 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 Bill Burr. Bill Burr, yeah, what's his character's He's in Space name? Boston Meg, right Meg now. Meg Mayfield. <laughs> <laughs> Boston. <laughs> hey, well, stay out of your mother for me. Uh, yeah, no, uh, yes, I liked it. But it's a damn shame because season three is clearly not as good as the other seasons. Um, if we had these last two episodes and uh, very similar to that throughout the entire season, then we could. Or if we had an extended season and we had, you know, well, hell, even 14 episodes. We don't need to do 28 like a Clone you know, Wars or Bad Batch or something. Uh, 15, 16, like Bad Batch season two. So, uh, and Bad Batch season two does suffer from a lot of filler episodes. But when it gets to the point, the writing, I think, is actually kind of stronger. Hunter! Hunter! Yeah, fuck that. I don't, can't watch that show. <laughs> it is it is stronger. <laughs> um, but anyways, um, I am watching Bad Batch season two. I just haven't finished yet. We watched a little bit on the plane when we went to uh, out of country. Anything else to say? Let's wrap this up. <clears throat> nope. What about the future? Future, Joe, what do you want to happen in Mandalorian Season 4 since we know it's happening? We put so much and emphasis on the dark saber, we need to fucking go fix it. Okay. <laughs> you, they, Someone has to fix it because the whole thing, she's like, I don't think I they don't dark... care about the dark saber. No, no, I don't think they care about the dark saber. Yeah, I don't saber think they anymore. care about it. We spent this whole season on the dark saber. I know. <laughs> yeah, but it's not, it's not important. But anymore. then remember at the end, they're just like, yeah, you take it. And she's like, I guess. So I don't even think they care about that's the That's another reason anymore. why it was. No, that, there's going not a down. reason to go back to the dark saber. No, no, saber that's, what saying, that's what, another reason it. why I was going down. No, it's so, so, my six. Next season, Sabine and Ahsoka will show up and be like, this is a new quest. This is what we figured out. And they'll recruit Bo and Mando and try to. What? Do stuff. Yeah, so that the idea that I had that uh, they get recruited because of the Thrawn. Uh, yeah, kind of. Because I, I mean, Thrawn. If they're setting up Thrawn to be the big bad, which you know <laughs> like, we kind of know that they are, they're gonna have to you know do some sort of conflict. So. Wouldn't there be know. like too many characters though? Oh, like, that's uh, that is yeah, Dave Filoni's is, fucking thing. He's well, just they, like every character he's ever written goes in everything time. he's they're ever just done. Just kind of self-contained in their own series, and they can have cameos. But didn't they say that Joe about Avengers and Game? So these things better be two and a half hours long. Yeah, I was about to say, long. that's a movie. This is like 30, 30 yeah. minutes, if that. Correct, because with the upcoming Ahsoka season, uh, we potentially get the return of Ezra Bridger. If, if, if Thrawn is coming back, then Ezra has to come back. So you have Ezra, you have Zeb, that pilot cameo that we got Man in one bet. random episode. Um, Sabine Wren. Uh, and... Um, What's the other uh, Sabola? No, uh, that's Hera. Yeah, Hera. That's um, pod racing. So that's yes, yeah, a lot Sabulba. of characters. <laughs> and, uh, Sabulba, right? Yeah. And uh, uh, in and Ahsoka herself. Uh, but like we said, this is going to culminate, I think, into a movie that Dave Filoni is doing. So Ahsoka season one. I don't think the movie's coming out until rumored twenty twenty five. So yeah, you makes got sense. two years. So Ahsoka comes out this year. Yeah, August, I think. Or... Sets up Thrawn. That series will be followed by Skeleton Crew, which I think, I guess, will tie in. It's supposed to be like Goonies in space, <laughs> but maybe not as seriously as Mando and Ahsoka ties into Thrawn. Are we going to see the Skeleton Crew character, Jude Law, and all these little kids show up in, in, in they, the battle? They love Please the kids. don't do it. I don't think Ezra's coming back in Ahsoka at all. I think <gasps> I, 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 it's perfect, How right? How dare you? Well, I, I, I never watched it. He'll come back in the movie? Yeah, he'll come back in the movie. I think the, oh, Thrawn will come back. He's I outmaneuvered that stupid idiot because he's right. a fucking idiot child. And, and he's I, Thrawn is here and, and Ezra's down here. Right. And he's like, and then he'll come back and be like, the shining Jedi Knight yeah. coming down and save everyone in That's the movie. That's actually clever. I yeah. think that might go down. Yeah. If, if you're expecting Ezra and see ah Ahsoka Season 1, maybe you'll get a tease right at the end. But no, don't think you're getting Ezra. It could happen, but I mean, I mean... I um, <coughs> are we going to get another book of Boba Fett? Some people were wondering. We don't know. Mm -mm. Um, but mm -mm. Then, mm -mm. then it'll all culminate into the final battle with Thrawn in the film. And you know what? If you're going to do a new Star Wars a film and it's Thrawn in, in order to hold it up, I would much rather have Thrawn than somehow the Emperor has returned, you know? Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. 
and I am looking forward to the Dave Filoni movie. I am less looking forward to the Ray movie, and how how is uh, Grogu gonna factor into Ray now? Din Djarin presumably passes away. I don't know how old everybody is right now, and then by that series. But Grogu could factor into the future Ray New Jedi Order. I don't know. Um, it turns out that Order about, Order sixty six was an absolute massive fucking failure because there's a million Jedi alive, so they can just they, that they can in, they can invent a bunch of people uh, come. It back. doesn't bother me quite as much because if there are thousands of Jedi across the galaxy, and you consider how large the galaxy is and how you can kind of like Some escape high. in Star Wars you, with hyper jumps and you have no idea where people went. I think it's possible that a hundred have escaped. And how many have we seen so far? Maybe f five or six, mm -hmm. you know, have survived. So I'm still okay with it. I, I thought about it more after you said that. Um, you just where are they? Where, yeah. where are they at for the, all of these like major moments? Being they little just, bitches, they, just like don't, they just don't show up because yeah. they're, they're scared. They don't want to show their face because the Vader will chop <laughs> Vader will chop it off. Yeah. Yes, I mean Vader's yeah pretty badass. So I'm I'm curious. Will we get more Hayden Christensen now that he's come back to Star Wars? So. Maybe in Ahsoka flashbacks or or mind uh, communication. Who knows? Put him in the sand cool. planet. Find out why he really, no! why he really hates sand. Because <laughs> he's your sand is my ass crack. Yeah, <laughs> my gritty booty hole. I can't yeah. do it. Yeah. <laughs> so uh. that's why he hates sand. <laughs> yep. Uh, hopefully that's where we had a whole series. Like I would love a series with like Darth Vader, you know, hunting, hunting down the hundred Jedi that are right. Yeah. That would be fucking I would sweet. Fucking and love Hayden yeah. Christensen if it's leading that. Like that's how you get us fucking excited. Uh, yeah. Do that. Announce that one. All right. Well, uh, guys, what are you what are you looking forward to? How do you think this thing went down? Let us know in the comments below. Was there anything that we missed? And now we have a two year two year wait. Uh, so I could see how Joe's like this is not as satisfying as no. I was hoping because <laughs> now I gotta wait two years to see if the next season is gonna be good. So it kind of shakes your it does your faith a it does. little bit. It really does. Yeah, I understand. I understand completely. All right. What did y'all guys think? All right. We'll see. Oh, thank you uh, yes, to you guys for say. supporting us. Uh, uh, we have our own G Fuel now. flavor, Angry Army Ammunition. Load up. I got to come up. Help me come up with some kind locked of. Locked and loaded, baby. Uh, locked and loaded. <laughs> Get locked and loaded, baby. Triple, <laughs> a triple A experience. Boom, bam. Uh, get it right now, 30% off code. You're not going to get a bigger discount than that code, Angry Joe, uh, at G Fuel, and grab our flavor. It is the most delicious flavor out of 80 that we've tried. There's so many flavors out there. We can guarantee you you'll like that one. Yes. All right, guys. I will see you on the next Angry Joe show. Bye, Bye guys. guys.